start off by having uh, the reading of the open public meeting law. Ladies and gentlemen, notice the requirement of the open public meetings law has been satisfied with respect to this meeting, specifying the time, date, and location um, listed in the Herald News and the Burger Record, adopted, uh, um, posted, posted in the county uh, with the county clerk, posted in the administration building, mailed to two newspapers in accordance with the provisions of the law. Thank you. Roll call, please. Commissioners Octor, Duffy, here. James, here. L Lepore, here. Lazara, here. Vice Chairman Best, here. Chairman Bonte. Great. Uh, at this time, I'll entertain a motion to approve the minutes from the September 25, 2018 meeting. I'll second that. You made the motion. I need a second. 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 Mo moved by Commissioner. Commissioner Duffy, seconded by Commissioner James. That's like the way the commissioner sounds. Uh, uh, any questions? Hearing none, roll call please. Commissioner Duffy? Yes. James? Yes. Lepore? Okay. Lazara? Here. Yes. Uh, Vice Chairman Best? Abstain. Uh, I changed my vote to yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Pub public portion. Yes. At this time, I'll entertain a motion to enter into public portion. Oh. Moved by uh, Commissioner James. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Duffy. Roll call, please. Commissioners Duffy. Yes. James. Yes. Lafour. Yes. Lazara. Yes. Vice Chairman Best. Yes. Thank you. Uh, anyone from the public wishing to uh, be heard, please approach the podium. Seeing no one at the podium, I move to close the public portion. Oh, wait. We do have someone. I uh, just want to remind members from the public that you have three minutes and anything you say is a part of public record. We ask that you give your name and address as well as sign in in the sign in sheet that's at the podium. And this is for the housing meeting. This is for our housing. If you have anything regarding housing, uh, we'll have a public portion for our regular freeholder meeting, which is going to start right after this. Okay, well, you have three minutes. Disabilities, and uh, basically, we are concerned about the lack of uh, services for adults with disabilities in Pasay County. One of the things is the housing. Uh, we don't see any more housing being started for uh, adults with disabilities who have aged out of the schools. Uh, most of the group homes and other constructions are being done in other counties, um, specifically Bergen. They have the uh, United Way of Bergen coming up with some uh, new buildings, uh, but we don't see a lot of that doing, uh, done in uh, Passaic County. So that's something that you may want to include, um, uh, housing for people with disabilities, specifically people with developmental disabilities because they're not just a long wait list and nothing's being done in Jose County specifically. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? <coughs> Seeing no one from the podium, who would close the public portion? Second. Second. Motion made by Commissioner Duffy, second by Commissioner Ford, close the public portion. Roll call, please. Commissioner Duffy? Yes. James? Yes. Lepore? Yes. Lazara? Yes. Vice Chairman Best? Yes. This time I'll entertain a motion to approve resolutions on the consent agenda H1803, H1804, and H1805. Second. Moved by Commissioner Lepore, seconded by Commissioner James. Any questions? Hearing no questions, roll call please. Commissioner Duffy? Yes. James? Yes. Lepore? Yes. Lazara? Yes. Vice Chairman Best? Yes. Thank you. Uh, anything else that anyone would like to add? Any reports? Okay. Motion is been moved by Commissioner James, seconded by Commissioner Duffy. Roll call, please. Commissioner Duffy? Yes. James? Yes. Lepore? Yes. Lazaro? Yes. Vice Chairman Best? Yes. Thank you. Meeting adjourned. Twentieth, 2018 uh, conference agenda here at the City County Board of Chosen Freeholders. Can I have a roll call? Freeholders Opter, Bartlett, here. Best, here. Duffy, here. Lepore, here. Director James, here. Director Lazare, here. 
And our administrator's here for his report. Hello. presentation of reaccreditation certificates of the State County Sheriff's Office from the New Jersey State Police Association, Chiefs Association, to uh, Richard Burdnick from Harry Delgado, Director of the Accreditation. Sheriff, welcome, yeah. congratulations. Yeah. I'm going to have all the members of our department please come forward. I'd like to share with you the significance of the achievement. So accreditation is a process which here is a culture uh, in the uh, Passaic County uh, Sheriff's Office. The foundation of accreditation lies in the adoption of standards containing a clear statement of professional objectives in the state of New Jersey. There's 105 standards, many of which require multiple proofs of compliance. So accreditation is a progressive and time-proven way of helping law enforcement agencies calculate and improve their overall performances. It is a certification by an independent authority, in this case in the New Jersey State Association of Chiefs of Police, that the accredited agency was carefully measured against an established set of state and national standards and has met, in the case of Passaic Sheriff's um, Office, exceeded many of the uh, state and national standards. And I'll say that because at the end of this rigorous process, which in this case lasts three years for them to uh, receive accreditation, we have what we call the fiscal on-site on final uh, assessment visit. And we look for everything. I mentioned to you that you needed multiple proofs of compliance for the 105 standards. And we typically find something. In the case of the Passaic County Sheriff's Office, we didn't find anything. So in a traditional sense, they would, got, they would have received an A+. Plus. And that is truly remarkable because uh, there's usually uh, uh, issues that we find at the site that we resolve right then and there. But in this case, uh, that wasn't uh, necessary. So uh, what makes this agency so different is the fact that they perform many functions that are not traditionally associated with a sheriff's department, such as uniform patrol, mobile field communication, bomb squad, crisis response, et cetera, et cetera. So to that end, the sheriff's office completely, this time around, rebuilt and equipped their PSAP, or PSDP, the communication center, that is, and currently in progress is an auxiliary communication center. Uh, the Becerra Sheriff's Office and the direction of Sherry Richard Burnick is an extremely professional organization. The Sherry has, has achieved reaccreditation, demonstrating his commitment to maintaining his accredited status, that he's following and adhering to best practices, state and national. So it is indeed my pleasure for the second time, and I hope to be back in three years, Sheriff, the New Jersey State, uh, representing the New Jersey State Association of Chiefs of Police and the New Jersey Law Enforcement Commission to congratulate Sheriff Richard H. Burnick, the accreditation manager, who's become a good friend of mine, 
Director General Lazara, the staff of the Pasea County Sheriff's Office, the freeholders, and those citizens that they so proudly serve for achieving accreditation, joining a very exclusive group of law enforcement agencies in the state that have made this important commitment to excellence in policing. So to all, Sheriff, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. So I'd like to just thank you again for, I know the, uh, the process is in depth, and again, of course, you and everyone that was involved, we thank you for that. Uh, but I have to say that, uh, again, to uh, the administrator and the freeholders, that really uh, the credit goes to, first of all, John Lazaro, director, who initiated the program uh, three years ago. I thank you for the hard work that you've done. executive staff and each and every one here uh, we are a team and it's these officers here among those that are working and not here that make this happen so again to each and every one of you I thank you for the hard work that you do and for making this a reality for us and again keeping <coughs> us number one thank you all uh, administrator freeholders and I thank you for your support in the sheriff's department because without your support we would not be able to do what we do make promotions get the money we need um, and of course, get the things that we need as well. So we thank you. Congratulations. Take a big group picture. Maybe? Yes, yes. <laughs> Thank you. You got a time that's just right. That you want to do Congratulations, guys. Congratulations. We'll move along with the conference agenda. Except that I'm We are now a review of agenda K-1 and K-8. Do you have any late starters or amendments? <laughs>
meeting specifying the time, date, location, including the annual notice, adopting the reorganization meeting filed with the county clerk, post an administration building, and mailed to two, two newspapers in accordance with the provisions of the law. Thank you. Can we have a roll call? Three holders, Octor. Here. Bartlett, here. Best, here. Duffy, here. Ford, here. Deputy Director James, here. Director Lazare. Here. Here. Stand, please. O oh God, who provides for thy people by thy power and rules over them in love, be gracious enough to bless thy servants, our freeholders in the county of Passaic, that thy people may dwell in peace and safety through our Lord. Amen. 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 Please join me in Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, and indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We have a moment of silence to remember all the men and women who have died while serving in the United States Armed Forces. Thank you. I have a motion to approve the minutes of October 23rd, 2018. So be it. Thank you. Duffy and Laporte. Three holders, Octor? Yes. Bartlett? Yes. Past? Yes. Duffy? Yes. Laporte? Yes. Deputy Director James? Yes. Director Lazare? Yes. I have a motion to approve the proclamations. So moved. Second. Bartlett? Duffy. <coughs> Three holders, Octor, yes. Bartlett, yes. Best, yes. Duffy, yes. Four, yes. Deputy Director James, yes. Director Lazare, yes. Three holder reports. Yes. Anybody have one? I just want to uh, thank you, Bill Director. I just want to thank uh, Kenny, the Rose Crew, all of our staff uh, who did an absolutely amazing job during that storm. Uh, I don't care what people are saying. Uh, you know, there was accidents everywhere. Uh, the first storm was usually a difficult storm. People forget how to drive. But I saw our roads crews out there way before the storm started. We were salting, they were grinding, they were positioning themselves. I don't think anybody could have recognized the intensity of that storm. Certainly the uh, weather people didn't get it right. But once cars started backing up, I mean, everybody got out at the same time. There were accidents and delayed things. There was tractor trailers that were jackknifed. Uh, the cars just weren't moving. You can't plow when you can't get through to a road because of the cars who were jammed on it. But uh, all told, between you guys, the Sheriff's Department, everybody who was out there during this emergency, I give you kudos. I think you did it under the circumstances. I think you did a remarkable job, and I thank you on behalf of the realtors and the residents of State County. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. to mention that obviously we all know the elections are over now and I want to thank each and every one of you for your support during this election cycle and today we swore in our new county clerk I saw many of you here we're proud to have Danielle Iron I'm off on board with us and we'll work closely with her to make sure that this county runs as smoothly as it is now but I do thank you and I'd like to thank the department heads who were at the nonprofit summit this uh, year. We had a record number of people for the second year. You guys did a great job. We got a lot of information out there, and we're looking forward to next year's nonprofit summit. Thank you. Um, I'd just like to thank the voters of the State County. It's been a privilege to represent you for the last six years. Looking forward to three more. I'm grateful for your support on November 6th. Uh, for myself and for our entire ticket, and as the director said, uh, that uh, bright future that we're all working on began uh, for the clerk's office today. Danielle Ireland Imhoff uh, is your county clerk as of around 12:30 this afternoon, and uh, great things are ahead, uh, even more so. For the state but thank you to all the voters, thank you to all the volunteers, and everybody that was involved in so many different ways in this year's campaign. Uh, I always enjoy campaign season. I also enjoy when campaign season is over, <laughs> but I enjoy getting out there and talking about what we do. Uh, and apropos that, I just want to mention one piece of news out of uh, NJTPA, where I represent um, the Say County, uh, to report to my colleagues. The county has been awarded $3 million through a regional transportation alternatives grant for Phase 4 of the Morris Canal Greenway. Uh, phase 4 encompasses one of the last unimproved sections of the Greenway in Passaic County. 
is one of the most scenic. Uh, this $3 million is going to enable us to complete the Morris Canal Greenway Trail from where currently, where the trail improvements currently end <clears throat> at Wilmore Avenue and Main Street in Little Falls, uh, all the way to the entrance of the Pompton Aquatic Park along the Pompton Plains Crossroad in Wayne. This is going to create eight new miles of off-road trails and be part of what is ultimately a 103-mile green belt from Jersey City all the way to the Del Delaware Gap. We've been working hard on this uh, over many years. We've gotten previous grants, but this new funding will essentially complete the Passaic County section of the Greenway over the next year or two, and uh, the rest is uh, the counties around us to finish the route. So there's some good news for today. I just also want to thank um, uh, everybody who, who supported me during the campaign. Having run uh, two years in a row, much like John, I'm relieved uh, that the campaign is over. Did you win? Apparently. Apparently. Um, uh, but <laughs> uh, having run with most of this board now, uh, I'm, very, <laughs> um, I'm very grateful that the campaign is over. But, you know, um, I do want to say um, that you know the reason we do this, all this stuff. I often hear from people they don't want to be, they don't want to hear about politics. We go door to door sometimes. People say don't bother me with politics, and really all of that is really just noise in terms of what politics is. Politics is just the means by which we decide our democracy, um, and the people who will be able to make the decisions. I'm grateful to be able to be one of the freeholders along with my colleagues here to make the decisions for Passaic County. Um, we take that responsibility very seriously. Uh, and finally, I just want to congratulate our electorate, which came out in record numbers uh, in Passaic County and around the country, um, uh, incredibly proud of the fact that this is one of those times where we could say it wasn't low turnout, it wasn't apathetic, that there was, um, you know, regardless which side you're on, that there was actually some real uh, feeling behind it and some real excitement about it, uh, and hopefully we can live up to those expectations of good government. And I also want to congratulate Di uh, Danielle ireland Imhoff. Uh, I'm lucky enough to run with her, to have known her. I think she's doing a great job as clerk. And I just happen to know her husband, and he's a good guy too. And uh, we're very proud of, uh, of, of him and her, and uh, very excited for her, for her leadership. Anyone else? Uh, directly, yeah, there are 41 resolutions on the agenda this evening for the freeholders uh, to vote on uh, representing the work of the administration. Thank you. Just like to congratulate uh, my colleagues over there with a great win, and Danielle as well. I'm sure, uh, Lou, you got to get out here early, leave early at night to make sure dinner's on the table <laughs> and the clothes are folded. Yeah. So, uh, and I'd like to wish everyone, and, and certainly at uh, uh, Public Works and the Sheriff's Department, what uh, Kenny did in that snowstorm. I, I was stuck on Greenwood Lake Turnpike for about two and a half hours there, but it was. Uh, it was uh, Passaic County uh, trucks passing by, passing by. It was, it was a mess up there, but they did a great job, as usual. I wish everyone a happy Thanksgiving, of course, and uh, all the best to you. Thank you. Thank you. Pleasure, pleasure to be here with all of you. And that's about all you're going to get. <laughs> if I could, uh, Madam Director, and I want to thank Kenny and his uh, staff for the job that they did. You know, every snowstorm always presents uh, a different challenge, and this certainly was challenging. Um, but I also want to thank many of the municipalities that we came together, and so often, you know, governments just tend to point the finger, and that's not us, and, you know, that's the county, or well, the county says, well, no, that's uh, the municipality's problem. But uh, we had many municipalities that um, kind of stepped in, saw that we were struggling on our roads, Wayne Township, for one, uh, came out and helped us uh, plow some of the roads. I think it was Little Falls or Pumpkin Lakes, maybe both, that uh, I think it was Little Falls that we borrowed some of their salt so that our trucks didn't have to go back to our salt domes because, you know, plow trucks face the same traffic that, that commuters face. Um, so it really was, um, you know, a pleasure and it gives me pride when governments work together to solve problems rather than point fingers. So I not only want to thank Kenny and his crew, but I want to thank the municipalities that uh, that helped out as well to get through uh, what was a difficult storm throughout the state. Not, you know, not just here in Passaic County, but uh, throughout the state, up and down, and it was uh, a challenge. 
but we met today with Kenny and his supervisors as we typically do after storms like this to talk about what went right, what went wrong, how we can improve. Um, we're always looking for ways to get better and we came up with a few ideas today and um, you know every storm we hope to get a little bit better. But Kenny, thank you very much. Thanks Kenny. You rock. Okay. Communications? Uh, none? Have a motion to open up the uh, public portion of the meeting. EJ, and who is the second? Pat. Okay, if anyone would like. Feel is after. Yes. Bartlett. Yes. Best. Yes. Coffee. Yes. Yes. Before. yes. Deputy Director James. Yes. Director Lazare. Yes. If anyone would like to be heard, please come to the podium. State your name, address. You have three minutes. Don't forget to sign that sheet. Hi, um, my name is uh, Kevin Lindahl, um, 40 Congress Street, Bloomfield, New Jersey. Um, I'd like to talk about um, relationships and a push for an independent prosecutor. Um, relationships are important, and you know, being in politics, whether it's the federal level, the county, or the local level, some pieces of legislation, some funding measures can live or die based on trust and working with um, colleagues that you've worked with before, built partnerships and friendships with, and some other legislation, it works the other way, pieces of legislation can die if you don't have that working relationship or partnership with somebody. Um, and we've seen in this country um, prosecutors who are charging police officers, when that police officer is in the defense chair, the prosecutor is during their day job gathering evidence working with police departments, forming partnerships and relationships, which is all part of what they're supposed to do. But <clears throat> when it comes time to charge an officer with a fatality or an assault, all too often that prosecutor has worked with the very department where he's charging the officer from, gathering evidence, building friendships and partnerships and relationships with those departments. And it causes an unconscious bias this is not something that's conscious. A prosecutor's not going in there saying, I'm going to take it easy on this guy or not bring evidence to bear. But what we've seen happen is the full spectrum of evidence is not brought to bear in the same way when a police officer's in the defense chair, when the prosecutor going after that officer has worked with that local department in cases against civilians. And so unconsciously, that bias if you look at the conviction rates for officers that have um, shot unarmed civilians, it's very low. And we all know what that's doing to our country right now. It's tearing our country apart politically. We've seen the protests in the streets. We've seen the marches. And none of this is, I don't believe any of this is being done on purpose. I don't believe the prosecutor's walking in there saying, you know, he's going in there, there's four pieces of evidence, and he's emphasizing one or two, but not the full spectrum. 95% of the way we think is unconscious. And so my push would be for an independent prosecutor in the cases where a police officer is in the defense chair, the same deference to the fact that the officer is in the heat of the moment, has to make a split-second decision, um, all that wording would stay the same. The prosecutor would still be guided by that same, uh, the same deference to the officer doing their job as they are now. The only difference is that prosecutor would be independent, wouldn't be working with the same police department that he'd be um, with the officers from in his day job. That prosecutor would be unbiased, looking at the evidence, not having a formal partnership with the detectives and the police when that officer is in the defense chair. And if that evidence doesn't rise to the level of an indictment or a conviction in a civilian case, it shouldn't with the officer. But that officer should not be working with the very police departments that he's going after the cop with. And I think it would bring it to a march towards justice, neutrality. Let's have these cases stand on the evidence. And I hope I can come back and talk some more about a push for an independent prosecutor in, say, a county in the cases where the officers I'm sorry. I'm sorry. sitting in the defense chair. Thank you. Thank you.
Anyone else wishing to be heard? Come on up. <coughs> My name is Ana Rivera, 63 Weaver Street, Little Paul, New Jersey, and I um, I have Carlos Munoz. Um, he's um, disabled, he's 33 years old. The reason that I'm here with Mr. Carlos is that um, he got a green card, he's a United States citizen. Uh, he got the green card to DACA. Um, his mother's here with us tonight. Um, she came to me and told me that she wants her son to be working because he got social security. Um, because he's um, disabled, a lot of um, doors have been closed to him. He cannot find a job, even to support himself. Um, since he's in a um, citizen, he cannot collect Social Security. For that reason, um, we just want to ask, if you know any agency who can employ people with disabilities to able to work, or I can refer Mr. Munoz and his mother, what agency they can go to? Have you done both? We'll ask you. Mm -hmm. children and I meant children because they are our children but we're not talking about little kids that go to school and they receive about $100,000 a year for services from their Board of Educations. We're talking about children that are our children but are 21 years and over and that's the population that we are representing today. The model that we take is for Baker Bergen County County started in 1978 with uh, the Board of uh, Chosen Freeholders. 1978 was the first such office, the Office of Disability Services in New Jersey, to address and serve the needs of persons with disabilities. Division assists Bergen County residents with disabilities to achieve their full potential, to receive uh, full involvement and or inclusion in all aspects of everyday living and to promote community-based living options. That's from Bergen County. Uh, and then uh, Union County, you know, Union County Board of Chosen Freeholders has established the state's office for people with special needs, which will promote inclusion, conduct outreach, and provide recreational, educational, and social opportunities for residents living with special needs. Okay, the uh, freeholder chairman, Sergio Granados, announced the office in 2018. Okay, and they, they did do, um, little stuff like a fall fishing derby, um, some kind of uh, events that, uh, and also partner with community centers, schools, colleges, YMCA, businesses, support organizations and volunteer group groups to present recreation programs at county facilities as well as locations in various municipalities, okay? The programs are for little kids from five years old to adults. So um, basically, if Union County and Bergen County can do it, and uh, we have the documents, if anybody uh, cares to read them, they are in the internet as well. Uh, what we are asking for, from the state county freeholders is to allocate uh, money 
uh, you already have the facilities, but to allocate money uh, for services for our adults with disabilities. Uh, right now, there's about 13,000, let's say, county residents that are in special needs programs in school. All services stop at age 21. Services about, um, after that are very, very limited or non-existent, especially in this county. Uh, we have some people here from what used to be the Catholic Charities. They closed three years ago and there have not been any substitution for that program. And also, uh, right now, I see that uh, there was a grant award that was on uh, pay, um, item 84, grant award $30,000 to Catholic Families and Community Services project um, that's going to be reallocated for a traffic light. So I would like more information on that. So now I think that we are clear that we are talking about people post-21, not children. They are our children. But that doesn't mean that they're little kids. They have a lot of things going on already. Thank you.
we uh, we uh, performed for um, on the Spanish channel, uh, Spanish channel called um, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, we also did um, um, uh, a free um, say uh, performance for the Father English here in Madison, Jersey too. But um, it was basically um, basic notes on piano and um, uh, we also did uh, um, the clothes for the homeless and uh, and also um, uh, we used to cook well um, very um, um, and independently with supervision of course but um, also um, uh, um, we also gave uh, supplies for families and and for their families, like uh, groceries and um, other needs. Um, yeah. So, um, uh, and that's really it. If you want this, I can give it in English and just to let you know what we basically did there. Thank you. Thank you, Victor. I appreciate it. Really Out there? Yes. Bartlett? Best? Yes. Duffy? Yes. Four? Yes. Deputy Director James? Yes. Director Lazare? Yes. I think for Queenholder James would like to respond. Francine Vince could not be here this evening, but she did send me an email this afternoon and saying, uh, and I, was, I missed the last meeting, but there was an Iris uh, Rivera, I believe it was. Is that Iris? Yes, Iris. So you have a meeting with her on Monday? Yes. Okay, good. Thank you. So just know we are reaching out. We are trying to help. I don't want you to think that we're not. We really, truly are trying to help. specific things like housing or things like that. 
Um, it all goes out to what's called a request for proposal. So we're taking a look at every program we have that comes out of our human services department. And there's other resources throughout the, the county that are not, uh, not ours to give out. We're taking a look at that with what's provided by uh, you know, vendors that are out there now. Uh, we're re-examining how effective they are, if they're meeting needs, if there's needs that aren't being met. So uh, with the permission of Director Lazara, who's not on the committee, but she's going to be firmly involved in this, we're taking a look at all of that. Um, you know, it's quite a bit of money that comes through here. It's a pass-through from the federal government or the state government through the county. But we're responsible for, you know, getting those programs out and getting them funded for the money that comes in. So we're taking a look at it. And uh, I can assure you we're looking at everything that comes in. There's so much need in so many places in this county that it's very difficult to match everything. Uh, you know, money is tight, and, and quite frankly, the people in Washington don't seem to care. It's one party. Uh, and they've made massive cuts to th things that are necessary, like Medicare and Medicaid. Uh, the Medicaid cuts have been dramatic in help. And, you know, the last governor closed the North Jersey Training Center, uh, and that took me personally, because I know a young, he's not a young man anymore, but he's been there his whole life, he's just two years old. And um, they tried to transition him to a group home before, and it was not successful, so he was back there and happy and healthy, and I have no idea where he is now. I mean, some people did not survive that closure. So uh, the state has to step up, step it up. That was the worst decision they ever made to close that training center. Uh, it made an enormous difference in his life and those that live there. So um, that's what we're up against. It's not easy, as you know. Um, I will recommend you again, once again, Beth Marmalejos is part of our Workforce Investment Board. Talk to Beth Marmalejos because she has done wonderful things with her own son. Uh, and I, I will ask for permission to get your cell, her cell number to you. All right, and uh, but she sits on our, our Workforce Investor Board and she is a champion. She heads the Disabilities Committee and that all, is all about training. She's a good resource and a very good person and I think it's somebody you should talk to also. Thank you. Ready to move on. I have a motion to amend K77. Uh, can I do that and add K87 at the same time? Can I do that? I think motion. Motion. Uh, we got to add that here? K88. That would be K88. Go ahead. So um, we're going to add from the floor uh, to the consent agenda proposed resolution K88 which I'm going to ask Deborah Hoffman tomorrow, Office of Economic Development, to come up and explain. Uh, in a nutshell, uh, the request is to close the Straight Street Bridge on December 7th, the day which hopefully will not live in infamy in Passaic County when we close the Straight Street Bridge for uh, the CBS drama Elementary film here through the Passaic County Film Commission. And Deborah, kudos on your work getting more and more shows to film here in Passaic County. Uh, anytime you close a bridge, it requires a resolution of the freeholder board, and that's what we're asking. So I, I guess I sort of explained it, but I'd say if my colleagues have any questions, uh, or if there's anything you think I can explain, I'll make this try. Okay. Thank you so much, freeholder. Uh, we are coordinating with the engineering department, of course, and also with the roads department, because there will be an extra fee. Uh, not only are film permit fees in the county, but there will be a road closing fee as well. They've uh, already submitted a uh, a tentative kind of draft uh, um, plan so they'll divert the traffic and they'll have variable message boards. They've hired a formal, a real company who does this who can help direct traffic. Um, I just was reading my emails now and they're asking if we could close a little earlier because they have 12 hours of filming. So it's like 5 o'clock p.m. to 7 a.m. in the morning. And uh, so they have quite a lot of, to do. They would just is that during the week then? It's December 7th. I think that is Friday. 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 It's a Friday. And they are going to divert traffic, etc. So. So Friday night, Saturday morning? Yes. Rush hour is a little rough. A lot of bridges down here, though. You have, you have access to the bridge. Yeah. Yeah. It would be the first time the bridge got closed. 
Yeah, it's uh, from, I think they requested 7 p.m. to... Oh, okay. 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 7 p.m. 5 p.m. No, 7. Yeah, I, I would prefer, I prefer they would do 7 to 7. Okay. I would prefer, I would prefer. There's not going to be another right way if we say 7 to 7, they just, you know. Okay. I, I, no, I much prefer it be later on Friday, I earlier understand. on Saturday. Right, I understand. Really All sure. right, well, you know, we'll try to accommodate them, and that's 12 hours. Sure. The director, you know, they just love the location, et cetera. They'll, they're going to have uh, New York Police Department cars. I mean, it's going right, to be I'll quite. That to my <laughs> okay. Thank you, though. Thank you. Thank you. I just to clarify, so it's to amend uh, K-77, add K-87, and add K-88. I have a motion to amend K-87. I have a motion to amend K-87. That wasn't just a oh. second. <laughs> okay. That wasn't just a second. James is an opter. Bill is opter. Yes. Farley. Yes. Best. Yes. Duffy. Yes. Lepore. Yes. Deputy Director James. Yes. Director Lazare. Yes. I have a motion to accept consent agenda case uh, one through K88. Three holders out there. Yes. Bartlett. Recused on K69. Yes, on the others. Best. Recuse myself from K22 and K75. Yes, the others. Duffy. I used myself a ball, but no. <laughs> uh, Lepore? Yes. Director James? Yes. Director Lazare? Yes. Okay, we'll move on to new business. I have a motion to move the personnel. Personnel. Lepore and James. Okay. Three holders Octor? Yes. Bartlett? Yes. Best? Yes. Duffy? Yes. Lepore? Yes. Deputy Director James? Yes. Director Lazare? Yes. I have a motion to move the bill. The bill. Warren James. Field is out there. Yeah. Bartlett? Yes. Yeah. Best? Yes. Duffy? I'm going to uh, excuse myself on uh, resolution uh, 22. I to, uh, I'm, uh, going back to I'm going back to my. You got a book with this resolution. You got to vote on this and then. All right. I'm going to vote on this now. Yes, on, on, the, bill. on the bills. Yeah. The free will yes. have to go back and change the vote. Yeah, I'm sorry to alluded me this. Uh, yeah, just let the first. Yes. Lepore? Yes. Deputy Director James? Yes. Director Lazare? Yes. Okay. All right, let me go back. Does it change the outcome of the vote? Does not. No, sorry. Go. No, it doesn't. Uh, resolution 22, uh, I don't think it's a good idea. But this person should never be in a position of power. And I want to make, uh, make it clear that I am against appointing this person to uh, take that attack without mentioning his name. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Next, I have a motion for certification. Mm -hmm. Real is out there. Yes. Bartlett? Yes. Best? Yes. Duffy? Yes. Before? Yes. Deputy Director James? Yes. Director Lazare? Yes. Where do we see the departmental records? Received files. I have a motion to adjourn. James and Bartlett. Three holders, Octor. Yes. Bartlett. Yes. Best. Yes. Duffy. Look for Deputy Director James. Yes. Director Lazare. Yes. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Happy Thanksgiving.